Hey there, and welcome to a special holiday edition of On The Rack. As you can see, I've been busy decorating. I have my tree, complete with Pickle wearing a Santa hat ornament, sheep, and some kind of owl, probably, kind of. I'm also drinking a hot beverage out of a cup, wearing a tiny sweater, and I'm dressed in very heavy and festive clothing. It's 65 degrees outside. I'm very uncomfortable. But enough of that, let's look at the movie that I'm going to be watching today. It is The Night Before Christmas, and judging by the cover, it looks kind of not good. Um, but let's read the back, shall we? Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, except for Gregory, a very curious little mouse. This writing is super tiny. When Gregory overhears a naughty fairy, Impulse Stick, hmm, Planning to keep Santa from delivering toys, he embarks on an adventure to save Santa and Christmas with the help of an old mouse, Augustus, a wise owl, a wonderful fairy, Ellie Stir, and others. Will Gregory be able to save Santa and Christmas in time? Uh, inspired by the best-selling book from HarperCollins Publishers, Inc., beloved artist Mary Inglebright brings Clement C. Moore's classic The Night Before Christmas to life in brilliant CGI animation. I'm going to assume that is slightly overblown. Uh, featuring the voice talent of Academy Award winning actor Kevin Kline. I bet he's happy his name is associated with this. Um, the magical video is certain to become a holiday favorite for the whole family. Uh, it's only 26 minutes long, so I can't, I can't complain too much, I guess, but we'll see. And yeah, so I guess I'm going to watch this, and we'll be back in a bit. No. 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 New discussion. Why do holiday specials suck so much? Well, here we are again, I guess. Time to tackle this monstrosity two years later. I'm not gonna bother reading the back because I already did that. I'm not gonna bother with a Christmas background either. My tree's over there somewhere. Ugh, what does it matter? Maybe I'll use it for the next video. And honestly, I'm not even going to bother with coffee or hot cocoa this time. Let's just get straight to this. So, without further ado, the night before Christmas. At first you'd be fooled into thinking this isn't the sort of CG that haunts dreams and is instead merely bad traditional animation. But nope, it's Guardian of the Highlands levels of awful. After an extremely poorly named production studio title and a series of trailers that include a trailer for classic books, I'd wager this is as much of an injustice as burning them would be. Uh, the Felix the Cat Christmas special where the narrator literally tells you the whole story. You see, their old nemesis, the professor, and his sidekick, Rock Bottom, Excuse me. have placed the world in a deep freeze, covering it with an incredibly thick blanket of snow. Presumably so that you don't have to watch it. A trailer for Benji off the leash, at least that one has cute animals in it, and The Nutcracker, which I would wager is probably a much better movie. The movie starts predictably with the poem everyone knows, putting you in a false sense of security before revealing the main character. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute! That's not right! Here's problem number one, right off the bat. The animation is terrifying. Well, it doesn't get too far into the 
I can't use the term movie, the garbage show before it becomes obvious that a poem that fits on one page won't stretch very far, even if that limit is only 26 minutes. So instead of going the Robert Zemeckis route and shoving a bunch of filler in, they go the opposite route and try to stuff way too much in a small amount of time. Bad enough without the fact that everything they add is terrible. And hey, let's just call this problem number two. The story makes no freaking sense. First we have fairies, of course. Christmas fairies, why not? Good lord, I've seen screensavers with better animation than this. Anyways, we're introduced to the villain who does something to stop Santa. I'm not entirely sure, it's a spell of some kind. And ruin Christmas because, well, of course Christmas is in danger for this Christmas story. What were you expecting? Something original? The main character decides he has to do something. And after visiting a wise elder mouse named Augustus and a wise owl, he sets off on his adventure. And I know what you're thinking, it's just like The Secret of Nim. I mean, my god, these scenes are nearly identical. All joking aside, even if it is dripping with bitter sarcasm, the setup for all of this is pretty atrocious. I'll admit I blinked and miss how he even ran into the owl. Neither character have any impact on the story, and leave less of a lasting impression than Daniel from The House of Magic. And if your first question to this statement is, who the hell is Daniel? then that should tell you how little these characters matter. Basically, the story boils down to the main character has to find the Queen of Fairies to undo Impelstick's evil plot. To song, mind you. I'll find a way, I'll carry on. Which brings me to problem number three. This is indeed a musical. Now, if you were to take a guess at how good the music is in a film like this, it's terrible. It, it's just terrible. But you know what? It's Christmas! So you don't have to take my word for it. I'll play you a whole song from the movie. That's right, a whole song. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. There's a magic fairy circle in a wood. I'd take you there right now if I could. It's out in the snow. I can still see the glow. But where it might be, <laughs> I, I don't know. That was, what, 30 seconds? Yeah, problem number four. Why? Just why, in general. But mostly, I'm just confused as to why this exists. Most of the time, I can kind of see the point, but I can't imagine this is even much of a cash grab for a straight-to-DVD release because there's no way this made any money. I don't know, maybe this is a more modern version of some of the garbage I watched as a kid, but I just don't get it. Why make a 26 minute feature a musical? Why put this many characters in it? Why bother with a story like this? It's not good, so why try to shove it in at all? I mean, seriously, the pacing of all of this is so weird. And just for fun, let's look at some of this. For instance, how long do the characters important enough to be on the back of the box actually appear in the film? <clears throat> With the help of an old mouse, Augustus, wow they even gave him a name and a song, fancy, a wise owl, a wonderful fairy, Ali Esther, she gets the song too and manages to pep Gregory up when he goes through that standard hopeless moment present in all of these films. Which, remember that first song where he was all gung-ho? Yeah, this happens about two minutes after that. And then the villain does something and he floats down a river, which is apparently a deal breaker for the whole adventure. Eliester even gets kudos from the fairy queen. This is like if Dorothy picked up the Cowardly Lion like two minutes before meeting the Wizard of Oz and he got rewarded for walking through a door. The villain himself, Impelstick, yeah, he doesn't have much screen time either and he just pusses out as soon as the Queen shows up. Oh, and by the way, the back of the box goes on to mention others. Yeah, there are no other characters. This is all there is. 
And that's it. That's the whole story. They basically try to fit an hour and a half's worth of crappy plot points into 26 minutes. In addition to trying to add a plot, albeit a pointless one, they also try to make it a musical with songs that I swear were just written by someone reading a series of inspirational greeting cards. and then devote some of the time to the actual poem as well, which is treated as the big reward for sitting through all this. And my god, is it underwhelming. And you may be saying, well, hey, at least it's short. Well, you know what? Despite the fact that it's only 26 minutes long, I would rather watch all of the Rankin-Bass films on loop with pop and hillbilly versions of Christmas songs blaring on the background until Christmas than ever watch this piece of crap again. The fact that I had to watch it twice because I just couldn't motivate myself to write a script around this the first time is depressing. And frankly, it's even more depressing because I was able to repress it. This gives bad Christmas specials a bad name. The best part of it is the poem and everyone's heard it a million times. The story written around it makes no freaking sense. It, it's amazing. Why is Santa sitting in this dude's chair smoking? Do your damn job, Santa! How did they get Kevin Klein? Why does this movie even have a cast? How many people does it take to ruin something? I've seen better things from one person. Okay. Okay. It's okay. I'll fix it the way I did last time. I'm the animated heroine. I have some forgetting to do.